Welcome to the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. We all get cravings sometimes. Usually cravings are for the worst, for junk food. Stuff not good for us, but so satisfying. You ever wake up in the middle of the night craving cold fried chicken? Ever want a Snickers when stuck in traffic? While making an omelet, you ever get the urge to put the eggshells in your mouth? True story, when I was about three, I liked to eat eggshells. Thinking about it now just grosses me out, but back then I was into it. Then I was introduced to potato chips. But some cravings can be harmful. This is Swallow. Haley Bennett is Hunter, a young woman recently married to a rich guy named Richie. Really? They named him Richie? Yeah, there's something wrong with this guy. You get that too? Now she gets to be a stay-at-home homemaker. Watching TV, sketching, and making delicious meals hubby is late for. Like the kind of meals you get from HelloFresh. I'm kidding, I'm not, I'm not sponsored or anything. But wouldn't it be hilarious if their ad popped up right about now? I feel so lucky. You're special to me too. You'd think this would already be her happy ending, but it's anything but. Her in-laws are very dismissive of her. Uh, oh, by the way, Richie, uh, before I forget. I didn't edit that. That's how they are. She discovers her mutant ability to melt ice with her mind. But she'd rather eat it solid. Sorry. This ice is totally awesome. You know the food's expensive when even the ice is good. You would look so pretty with long hair. You should grow it out. So her life is very vacant and dry, passionless and cold. Her entire world just feels cold. Perfect on the outside, but like a store window display, behind it all, duct tape is holding everything barely together. One day when Hunter is all alone, she develops a random urge to eat a marble. Mm. I am fascinated by people who can dry swallow things. Even ibuprofen, I need half gallon of water. But that's only half of it. They have to come out sometime. What the fuck is this? Well, go get it. Corn, corn, corn. Got it. Just rinse it off and into her collection. I hope she used soap. It doesn't stop with smooth, round marbles. At first you think she's not going to do it, but the wheels are turning. Eat me. Eat me. Oh, all right. Mmm. <laughs> You know, I bet even vegans are screaming right now, for God's sake, just eat a burger. Don't look so happy. It's gonna hurt on the way out, you know. Told you. What's wrong? You're trembling. Oh, just a stubborn nugget. You know how it is. Gross. She really gets a charge out of her new hobby. <laughs> this isn't even a cookbook. <laughs> you know, these had to hurt. And now she will swallow anything. You know, I think Epstein really did kill himself. What happens to bored trophy wives? They get pregnant. They get sonograms. Remember all that stuff she had been swallowing? They didn't all leave. She has to have surgery to remove the foreign objects. Of course, her loving husband is understanding. Why? Why? Why would you do something like this? Hunter is diagnosed with pica, a psychological disorder that makes people want to eat non-food objects. This is a real thing. They take Hunter to a psychiatrist to get to the bottom of this. I just like the textures in my mouth. Rather than get her actual help, it's time for a juice cleanse. Lots of iron. Why, you got some fishing lures in there? You holding out? They hired Lue to make sure she eats only sanctioned, approved food. As usual, she doesn't seem to have much of a choice here. Help us help you. Okay, show me the money. He watches her like a hawk. He even has to frisk her before she goes into the bathroom, which is useless because she has a hidden stash. I said you swallowed a battery. I was out of coffee. During a party, we find out now everyone knows about Hunter's pica, which is weird. I would have expected a family like this to keep this sort of thing under wraps to keep their perfect image up. But this also shows how little they respect Hunter anyway. So any imperfections on her part are normal and even expected, yet amusing. Her life deteriorates into Candy Crush and sheer boredom. But for Richie, maybe Pika isn't so bad after all. In therapy, Hunter reveals she's a child of rape. She never met her biological father since he went to jail and everything, but she carries his picture and knows who he is. Technically, dirt is organic, right? You're supposed to tell me everything. Everything! 
Turns out the shrink is spilling the beans to her husband. You'd expect this to be privileged information, but Richie is paying the doctor a little extra to violate HIPAA and tell him exactly what she learns in sessions with Hunter. So he learns all about the rape, Hunter's father, and everything else said in confidence. Even her hatred of napkins. Oh, air raid. Here you see Lue starting to sympathize with Hunter, and they sort of bond under the bed. Despite making a new friend, Hunter wakes up and swallows a jeweler's screwdriver. Ugh. You are so fired. You had one job, man. She has surgery, yet again, and they arrange to have Hunter committed to a psychiatric hospital. Or else, Richie will divorce her. Another red flag. Lue takes pity on Hunter and helps her escape. I, I guess she overpowered him. She hit me, boss. Hunter hides out in a mo and calls Richie. At first, he begs her to return. He's being nice. It'll be okay, yada yada yada. Then she tells him that she realized she rushed into marriage rushed into pregnancy, all to make him happy. Now she needs to take a step back. And when she doesn't fall right into line, he gets abusive on the phone and we get his true colors. The red light is a little heavy handed, don't you think? You're not good at anything. You can't do anything. I can hunt you down, young grateful girl. Yeah, this guy will make a great father. I guess DoorDash goes to Home Depot now. If she's eating dirt and she finds a worm, do you think that makes it worse or better? Don't treat like this. Ugh, there's a hair in it. Housekeeping, vacuum, change sheets, wipe your face. I'm checking out. She calls her mom, who's no help at all. So she tracks down her biological father, Mr. Rapist, and crashes his birthday party. Cake, what on earth is that? Oh yeah, I remember this stuff. At first they think she's just another guest, but she reveals who she is. You remember Joe McCoy, right? She's my mom. <laughs> Ixnay on the id K. Can I show Hunter my room? No, honey, you gotta go to bed. It's about your bedtime. Mm -hmm. Bed? It's like noon. This is the first time we see Hunter actually take charge of a situation. I will do whatever the fuck I want. And you can tell he's worried she's about to blackmail the shit out of him or something. I mean, we're talking 30 years of retroactive allowance. But no, she just wants answers. And then I went to jail. Generally, rapists are not well liked in prison. What she gets is closure. Am I like you? No. Mainly I like to eat poker chips. Papa! It's interesting her nurse and her mother's rapists are the most positive figures she runs into in this entire movie. Hunter visits a clinic and gets medication to induce a miscarriage, which kicks in really fast. Do not go in there. Hunter moves on with her life to where no one knows. That was Swallow. This movie is not what I was expecting. IMDb lists it as a thriller rather than a sensationalized tale of culinary bodily harm. It's not a thriller. Swallow is a story about a woman's mental state in an abusive environment. The pica was exposed early on, so it wasn't about her swallowing things so much as the effect it had on her relationship with everyone else. It was more of a coping mechanism. Also, pica can be caused by pregnancy, and when her pregnancy is terminated, it, it's almost insinuated that that's the end of her pica. I like the cinematography, it's hypnotic, it's very stylized. Every image is well composed and just perfect. Which is the point, perfection, with a lot more going on underneath. Their house is mostly glass, she's like a fish in an aquarium. Shots are held long enough to process emotions alongside Hunter, and a little beyond to make it uncomfortable. Miss Bennett did a terrific job. I had a great deal of sympathy for her character. I could feel her isolation and loneliness, and even with her husband, I could see abusive tendencies right from the start. He's potentially violent, which becomes evident, yet not surprisingly, when he finally snaps at the end. But again, there's no resolution to that relationship. Pika is not really the focus of the story. It's treated as the gimmick paraded in front of other characters to be regarded with disgust. You can replace the Pika disorder with any number of other disorders, compulsions, or addictions. What if she became anorexic, bulimic, alcoholic? What if she started cutting herself or popping pills? The story would not change much. To, to Richie and his family, it's just an embarrassing problem they need to solve. Hunter was used to working for a living. Hell, her name is Hunter. I'm pretty sure her maiden name was Everyman. Thrust into an existence where she had less control, less respect, and less meaning to her life. Her disorder was her way of seizing control. Richie is a cookie-cutter, lifetime movie bad husband. It's a slow-paced movie. You get a lot of time to bond with Hunter and learn about her character, but nobody else. It's Hunter versus the world. It's like eating a marble. Not very satisfying. Swallow is two and a half Bs. The subject is a serious one with a serious illness, but it's brushed off with a rather shallow treatment. 
It's like they wanted to be sensational, but backed away, leaving very little on the plate. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell. You know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles. Thank you.